Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Amen. What an awesome day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Clothed and dressed in our right mind. Once again, our Heavenly Father has allowed us to be here in, our, in attendance and a part of His body. Amen. We welcome you to a helping hand ministry located at 3003 Peach Archer Road. Stop in sometime in your spare time. We have a Holy Ghost party Amen. in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Verse for the day is from Proverbs 27, 17. Old Deacon Smith's favorite. As iron sharpen eye, so a man sharpen the confidence of his friend. Amen. 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 Let us bow our head in a word of prayer. Father God, O oh, gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for being the God that you are, forgiving God. You forgive us our sin, our trespassing, which we do daily. But thank you for blessing us and allowing us just one more day to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who you sent us a sacrificial lamb. That our sin may be forgiven, that we just believe in Him. And Father, we thank you for such an opportunity. Father, once again, we ask healing yes, for my grandchild. Yes. Help the Lord. Yes. Young man, yes. love the Lord. Yes. He's going through a lot, but he's yes. strong. Yes. But we just need you to reach out and touch him. Yes. Just touch his soul, Father Lord. Let your anointing. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord, your Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Everybody. We praise the Lord, everybody. Yes. Is everybody in the room? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to give God some praise this morning. How many come to bless the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise because we know that this is the day that the Lord has made, right? Amen. And because he made the day, he allowed us to live and not die. And we're here to glorify him. Amen. Amen. Every chance, every opportunity we get, we want to give God praise. Amen. Amen. So this is your opportunity. Give God Amen. praise. Now, what I need from you this morning is, I need your hands. Yes. I need your hands because we want to sing a song. It's going to be with no music. And it's Isaiah, the 60th chapter, and the first verse. Come on. Your hands I need. Give me your hands. The name of the song is Arise, shine, for the light is come. Yeah. Arise, shine, for the light is come. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord has begun. The glory of the Lord is come. The glory of the Lord has begun upon me.
Amen. Praise God. Amen. How many know he's working miracles? Yes. Hallelujah. We want to give him the glory for all the miracles that he's done. Hallelujah. Such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. Oh, it's up at the theme of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me now. Right now, I know you're able. Keeper, 
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
He's a great man. Yes, sir. I don't know about you. All right. But I know he made a way for me. Amen. And when we start thinking about the ways that he has made for us. It really causes us to, to want to praise him more. Amen. Something about a way maker, a miracle worker. Sometimes we say, Lord, if, if a miracle don't happen right now, mm. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Yes. But he says, I'm a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. Yes. You know, uh, we, can, we can count on his promises. Yes. <laughs> you know, he says that, that he had never spoken a word that he is not willing to back up. That's right. A promise keeper. And even when God wanted to make changes, he was reminded of his promise. That's right. And he said, I, I, I will fit. Yes. And I'm going to stick with what I said I'm going to do. Yes. And he tells us that his word will not return to him void. Right. A way maker. Yes. A miracle worker. All a promise right. keeper. Yes. And then this morning that, that there are those that need to hear those promises. Amen. They need to experience those miracles. And they need to see the main worker. Do his thing. Yes. Father, we thank you. Thank and we you. praise you, Lord, that you yes. allow us an opportunity to come into your presence. Yes. And, and we're not alone, God, because even right now the angels are crying, holy, holy, holy. Right. And we thank you, Lord, that you allow us to join in with that heavenly chorus that we can say again, together with them, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And we thank you, God, because thank right you. now, Lord, there are those who have needs and concerns. Yes. concerns you, Lord. There are those that are oppressed on, on every side of and, and you know where they are. There are those, God, that are struggling with a little bit of this and, and a little bit of that. And, and you know exactly the, the path that they're taking. But right now, Father, we're calling on your precious name and ask, Lord, that you intervene. And that you do something. Yes. I'm going to give it a name, God. Do something. Amen. <laughs> you know, sometimes we need to say, just do something. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Lord, I, don't, I don't care what you do something, God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Show me, Lord, that yes. who you are, God. Do something. Hallelujah. And that's all we need, Lord, is for you to do something. Great. And Lord, that even David recognized that that that, that he, if he trusted himself into your hands, that you were gonna do something. Yes. He said, No, don't turn me over to my enemy. Turn me over to the Lord because I know that he's merciful. Oh, I know that he's loving, he's kind. And Lord, you all of those things, and we thank you for that. So thank right now, Father, touch thank the hearts of your children. Yes. Oh, give us the strength that we need, Lord, to continue yes. to, to prod on, God. Yes. Sometimes, Lord, breaking up that fertile ground is a little difficult, but you said we must break it up. Yes. Amen. <laughs> oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you. And Lord, we praise you today. Yes. Yes. Oh, how oh, can you know, today we're going to talk about something. And, and this day has it, been stirring. How, how then shall we survive? Mm -hmm. And, and we're, we're living in a, a, a time where, where there are a perilous time. And, and I don't care what you do. You can turn on the news mm -hmm. and, and you can see that there's volcanoes erupting. Earthquakes going on, mudslides, yes, yes. Uh, pestilences everywhere, disaster is a, a popping up over here and over there, and, and even sometimes right around the corner. That's right. That's right. Things are just taking place, and, and, and we're faced with, with asking that question, how, how then shall we survive? Lord, all of this is, is going on, and, and, and I, I, I've said this once before, that, that we're asking questions that are already answered in the Bible. Yes, yes. 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 And, and sometimes we just need to go in and, and see what the, the word of God has to say about the things that we're asking questions about. That's right. So how then shall we survive? In, in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 10, reads like this. Son of man, give the people of Israel this message. And you say, well, what they got to do with me? Hold on. You are saying our sins are heavy upon us. We are wasting away. How can we survive? Oh, my God. You know, it, it, it's something about that question. How then can we survive? How then shall we survive with all of the things that have taken place around about us? 
You know, I don't care where you look or where you turn, you're going to see some trouble. You're going to see some type of calamity. You're going to see something going on. In 2 Timothy 3, it says this. But I understand this, that in those last days, many dangerous times of great distress and trouble will come. Oh, Lord. I don't know. I think about that. It says difficult days will be hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. And they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection. Callous and inhumane, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, devoid of self control, intemperate, immoral, brutal, haters of good, traitors, reckless, conceited lovers of sensual pleasures rather than lovers of God. You know something? We, we, we get caught up in doing things, on hey, Sensual pleasures rather than lovers of God. Hold into a form of outward godliness, which is religion, although they have denied its power. Oh boy, isn't that something? Uh, they, they recognize the power, but they deny it. Mm, I know it. And something about that. They they what what does the word goes on to say that that they their conduct notifies their claim of faith. You say you have faith? Uh-huh. And James said you have faith, but faith without works is what? It's yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah. Avoid yeah. such people and keep far away from them. You know, these, these verses read like I have my news. Yes, sir. Mm. Come on. You know, I, I watch CNN. Somebody else, I went out my office. I got this big screen TV, which I play the news on. Okay. And, uh, and it's just play all day. I mean, because you know what? Now I got something I know I can focus on praying for. Because yes. all of these disasters and yes. the stuff that's going on, you know, sometimes we don't know what to pray about. I got something to pray about. Yes, sir. But, but, but think about the headline news. You, I don't know, there's not newspapers. Well, they still have a few newspapers. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's not like it used to be. No. Hear you, hear you, hear you. And somebody's announcing the, the, the changes on what's going on in the world. You know, but we don't have to go too far to find out what's going on in the world. And, and that's amazing because something could be happening way across the world. And guess what? A way across the world ahead of us. <laughs> you know that? They're 12, 14 hours ahead of us. Okay. So they've already been in their day. This is their evening. They've been getting ready to settle down. Okay. So that means they've already experienced what took place today. We're just getting our day started. Okay. But things are also going on, not just only in the world, but things are going on in the church. Uh -huh. And it's things that we need to, to see what God has to say about, about these perilous times of times that are affecting the church. How do we, how shall we survive? You know, so along, uh, so all along, God has been, been sending his word to help us. He said, I sent my word, and the word dwelt amongst them. Isn't that something? Right. That God sent his word to dwell amongst us. Jesus was the word of God. He said, the word became flesh and dwelt among them. Yes, that's There's right. something about having the living word in your midst. That's right. And even though the, 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 the physical person of Jesus Christ is not here sitting in the seat, that's that right. spiritual aspect of him is still here. It's the word, the living word. Yes. And he says that if you eat my word, uh -huh. right. then we stop there. Uh -huh. He said, you can't have no part of me if you don't eat it. Amen. You've got to take it in. Uh -huh. yes. And as we learn how to take the word of God in, that's we'll have right. something to put out. That's right. I mean, uh, what did he say? He says, not what, what goes in a man's mouth that defiles him. That's right. It's what comes out of his mouth. Right. Exactly. And so we need to learn how, how to get that word in us mm -hmm. so that way when something needs to come out, it's going to be what we put in. That's right. That's right. It's something about what God wants us to do. He wants us to watch over our heart. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 4, 23 says, watch over your heart with all diligence. Diligence. For from the heart flows the springs of life. Yes, sir. Ooh. Ooh. The springs of life. You know, it's something about those waters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they said out of your belly it shall flow living water. Amen. You know, that, that water that, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you can imagine somebody just showering something on it. You go to somebody and they spray you with the water. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got you. You know, they spray you, spray down. I got you. Water gun. You know, that's what it should be like. Yeah. You know, out of our bellies, your flow rivers, and meaning, look, 
that something that we're saying in the inside is coming out and it's affecting those that hear it. Yes, sir. So we need to allow that to let it flow and be springs of living life. And in this case, he's talking about the heart, which yes. is that inward person. Yes. You know, and our conscience, you know, people people kind of ignore that too. Oh, yeah. ah, there you go again. Yeah. You know, because we want to do this. Yeah. But something inside of us say, well, I don't think you need to do that. Uh -huh. Oh, there you go again. We've been talking to ourselves. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. You know, and, and, and what are, you, what, you want me to do right? Do the right thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, do right. Yes, sir. You know, but it's something about how we need to learn how to plan on guarding our heart. Yes, sir. And, and, and I don't want to take that lightly because we need to guard our heart with all diligence is what the word said. Guard your heart with all diligence. Yeah. He said, my son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings and do not let them escape your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. And, and what is, he's just not talking about this heart muscle. Come on, come on. He's talking about that, that thing that, that where he resides within us. Keep them in the center. He says, for, for, uh, for they are life to those who find them. Yes, it is. And healing and health to all their flesh. Yes, sir. You know, somebody says, well, how am I going to get it? Uh, uh, how am I going to survive? You know, uh, we start thinking, looking at our circumstances. Mm. Oh boy, look what the, 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 the rents do. Oh, you know, I know we all gonna struggle with that kind of stuff. Oh, the, the yeah, light yeah. builders do. Right. You know, That's last right. month it was $150, nah. but because I've been using my air conditioner, <laughs> now it's $350. Yeah, 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 yeah. How, how am I gonna survive? Nah, yeah. And nah. when it's time to buy some medication, that, that yeah. you're saying, that, am I gonna buy food oh. or am I gonna buy medication? Sure. And see, those are the choices that we are yes. living with and dealing with on a day to day basis. Yes. Do I do a little bit of this or do I do a little bit of that? Yeah. And God is telling us that we need to learn how to walk that straight and now. That's right. He says this we need to have a clear understanding of what it means to guard that heart. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it has been established uh, that the heart also speaks about light. Say what? Ephesians says this, but now you are the light of the world. Yes, sir. Walk as children of light, mm -hmm. for the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Amen. Have you ever asked a question? Not Lord, how should I, how, how, how should, should I survive? Mm -hmm. Have you asked, need to ask the question, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because he says this, the promise, we, promise keeper, never have I seen the righteous forsaken no, or see. his seed begging bread. Right. Not, Lord, how am I going to survive, but Lord, what do you want me to do in the meantime? Mm, yes. While I'm sitting by the brook Kindred yes, and yes. the ravens are feeding me, yes. <laughs> what am I going to do? When the, what did Elijah say? He said, look, it's not going to rain for three and a half years. What am I going to do while I'm sitting here watching this water dry up? All right. Oh, yes, he had a time of worshiping and fellowshipping with God. What do you do when, when, when your circumstances seem to be insurmountable? Yeah. What do you do when you say that, that how am I going to get over? And I told you my story about Ensley. And I, I still believe that, that we, how, how are you going to make the ends meet? Okay. That's what Mama used to say. You know, <laughs> we got to make ends meet. <laughs> and and she, she knew how to colonize. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know about that. Mm -hmm. You know, where you can take a, a little bit of chicken uh -huh. and make a whole meal yeah. and feed six people. Okay. And I never understood that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that, little, that little chicken fed six people. But guess what it did? <laughs> and, and we were full. And, and a pot of rice. A little bit of chicken and a pot of rice. Amen. So, Amen. And, and season it up just right. Yeah. And you, you back your lips. You want some more. <laughs> But she knew how to make ends meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and so I don't think that that was just a, a, a natural occurrence. Okay. But I saw her on her knees often too. Yes, Lord. Crying out to God. Right. How often do we cry out to God rather than say, Lord, how then shall I survive? I mean, Lord, show me your glory. Yes. Oh, Lord, show me the way that leads to your holiness, God. Yes. So those are the things we need to be crying out and asking God to show us and to demonstrate before us. 
But remember this, that if we are children of the light, we don't walk in darkness. And remember this, that we cannot walk in darkness of the world and the light of God at the same time. What is that light? That's like straddle of the fence. Yes, sir. And that's real uncomfortable. Okay. I mean, it should be. Oh, yeah. you know, so, somebody gonna say, well, I'm tall enough to. I'm tall. Somebody gonna say that. Right? Somebody in the crowd is gonna say, I'm tall enough to straddle this fence. Right? <laughs> this is high. Let me see you do that. But the word says that bitter and sweet water don't come out the same time. Bitter, no, no. I mean, you can't get it to come out. I mean, you, you try it. Okay. I mean, and, and hot and cold water don't come out the same. You know, and, and we need to look at some of these, these things that are written in the Bible, and, and sure, they sound good. Oh, uh-huh. But we need to take them to heart. Yes, sir. You know, when he began to talk about these proverbs, you know how a, 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 soft, a soft word uh, deflects anger yes. or wrath. You know, you can be kind to somebody and it, it takes, takes away all of that stuff that they were ready to do to you. <laughs> how then shall we survive? You know, we, we get involved in a lot of things that the world has to present, and what do we call it? We call it recreation. Yeah. We put a name to it. And I'm not saying that recreation is wrong, but I'm saying that if your recreation is taking you away from, from God, if your recreation is, is giving you a different perspective of where God's at, and, then yeah, I think you need to go back and look at your recreation. Mm-hmm. What am I doing? That's what, and, and, and you know, we're faced with making, having to make choices and decisions. And I was sharing with Pete, the other day about some years ago when, when my son was playing uh, into, into city sports. Yes, yes. And uh, they played on Wednesday. <laughs> and it was time for church on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. And, and since I was a deacon, the pastor said I expect all my deacons to be in church when church is open. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, we, I mean, even the church, like I said, what's the, what's the climate of the church? Uh-huh. What's the happening? What is the church promoting? Yeah. And so I felt it was better for me to be with my son. Come on. Than the pretending to be in church and wanting to be someplace else. Oh, we call it recreation, but we call it life learning lessons too. That right. sometimes right. we need to, to stop just trying to be a Pharisee <laughs> or a Sadducee. Yeah, yeah. And we need to go ahead and be a, a father. Well, and right. boy, don't we got a message for you next week, Dad. We're going to be talking about them bones. And we're going to talk about them bones and let you know what them bones really mean. Mm-hmm. So we need to learn how to, to, to do the right thing. That's right. And so instead of uh, just getting caught up in recreation, we need to learn how to, to involve God in whatever it is that we're doing. So let me tell you that, that we cannot walk in victory and walk in darkness at the same time. That's right. You do. And, and, and somebody's thinking about that right now. Hey, so let me see. Can I walk in victory? No, we can't do it. That God wants to lead us to always walk in the light as he is in the light. And that's what he tells us. If you walk in the light as I'm in the light, that we're going to have fellowship one with another. So how then shall we survive? We survive by learning to walk in the light. We learn how to walk in the light of his word. We learn how to trust his word. His word tells us that we are more than conquerors. Yes, in does. order to be more than something, you had to be something. Yes, sir. And so we're more than that. And he equips us to become more than that. Yes, sir. You say, how can I overcome? How can I survive this? Because he greater is he that yes. is with me than he yes. that is in the world. And see, we talk about that, but then when it's time to put it in action, yeah. when it's time to, 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 to stand on it, yeah. when it's time to say that I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to dig my foot in the sand. And see, we dig our feet in the sand about certain issues, yeah. right? certain things yeah. that, that we feel is important. Stand but the, the, the time is coming where somebody's going to challenge what you believe. Yes, sir. Somebody's going to knock on your door and say, who do you believe? And if you say the wrong thing, you're gone. <laughs> okay. I'm not making this. It happened before. Oh, yeah. Those people that said, I'm, I'm one of his. They took him out. Are we willing to make that kind of stand? How then shall we survive? By trusting God. Knowing that, that he's never going to leave us or forsake us. Right. How then shall we survive? By learning his word, by digesting that's and right. eating the word of God. Yes. And then we'll have something to pull on. We'll have something that's embedded in us. That when we'll squeeze, whatever was put in there is going to come out. Yes. Oh, yes. And we squeeze. Yes, sir. I mean, we're not only squeezing our homes. Okay. We're squeezing our communities. We're squeezing yes. our jobs. You know, everywhere we go, we heard about what happened just the other day. That the young lady was squeezed. She was exposed to something that she hadn't been exposed to. That's right. 
how do you take that when you're exposed to something that this is the first time that I encountered that? Yes, oh, yes. My God, it can rock you if you don't have a foundation. Yes, right. And that's what we're talking about. We're having a foundation of how then shall we survive by, by having a foundation in Jesus Christ. Sure. By having a foundation in the Word of God. Yes, sir. Knowing what He's saying. Right. Not what I'm saying. Know what he said. What, what did he tell you? He and he said, yeah. early in the morning, that's what the psalmist said, I'm going to make my request known unto God. Yeah. Early in the morning. He said, when, 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 when my eye open, because some people only open one eye at a time. But when my eye open, I'm going to make my request known to God. He said, God, what is it that you want me to do today? Whose life do you want me to touch today? Some people are like, I'm going to do today. But guess what? You can still touch somebody. Yes. And, and you know, we never far away from, from these days. Okay. And, and yeah. we can touch somebody. Oh, yeah. And that's what it's all about, touching somebody. Yes. So when you ask the question, how then shall we survive, we need to know that, that, that there's an obligation for us to, to be careful about what we hear. Yes. <laughs> Not only what we see, we need to be careful what we hear. That's right. You know, it says that faith comes by what? By hearing the word of God. You know, be careful what you hear because if you're not, if you're hearing the wrong thing. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. And, and you know, there's a, a lot of stuff out there in the atmosphere uh, that's going around. Yeah. And let me tell you that the, the enemy, he has a beat too. He has not only a beat, but he has a rhythm. That's and right. you know, and people get gravitated too. I mean, you walk into a place and you didn't even know you no, they're playing some music and you walk, and the next thing you know, you start bouncing and, and you, you walk in the step and you say, what's up with that? And, 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 and the, the enemy has a beat in the rhythm. And the next thing you know, you got 30 people. And they have these, these parties, they call them rave parties. And, and they, that's all they be doing. They be listening to music and, and jumping up and down. You know, and, be careful what you hear. That's yes. right. We That's need right. to put a guard around that. Mark chapter 4 says, If anyone has ears to hear, uh -huh. let him hear. Then he said to them, Take heed to what you hear. What are we talking about? We're talking about understanding what's being communicated to you. And, right. and, and you know, we, we, we have the ability to bring his thought into captivity. Yes, he said, bring it in captivity under the subjection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Meaning that we can analyze whatever it is that we hear yes, before we actually receive it. Yes, sir. Say what? Yeah. Before we take that in and become a part of us, we can reject it and say, get out of here. Yeah. And that's what we need to begin to do. Take control over what we take in so it will affect what we put out. Yes, sir. We need to take control over what we put in. And you know, some of the things we put in is, is, is all contrary to the word of God. I know. Uh, you know, I can't do that. Oh, uh, oh, I can't do that. Uh, I'm having difficulty understanding that. You know, we, we, we tell ourselves these things. Uh, uh -huh. uh, but we need to begin, and I'm not talking about uh, positive confession, but I'm talking about speaking things that, that are not as though they were. Uh -huh. Because greater is he that's in me. Remember that. Greater, confess that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. You know, we need to begin to confess those positive things about what God said that we can do yeah. and who he says we are. How then shall I survive? I can survive by confessing that God is, is big and mighty. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. Yeah. He's a promise keeper. Yeah. And when you begin to confess those things, then, then those, those aches and those pains don't seem to be as bad. Right. I'm not saying that they somehow all of a sudden disappear. But you know, you start singing a song when, you're, when, you're, when your legs start hurting. Yeah. Or when your back is aching. You start singing a song and, and you, you begin to focus on the, the song that you're singing yeah. to God. And, and the next yeah. thing you know, it, 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 it doesn't feel that bad. I yeah. mean, the, 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 the stuff is still there. But it doesn't feel that bad when I begin to praise God and involve him. In. He says, look, I want to be a part of what's going on in you. He says, we will come and take up our abode in you. So as we gain control over what we take in and what we put out, Matthew says this, hear and understand. Not what goes in the mouth, 
that the Father's man when we we'll come out. And, and believe me, that we have some stuff that come out on us. Yes, and, and, and sometimes we we'll say it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and, and I can tell you that, that Jesus don't want to have nothing to do. Sometimes we will proclaim those things, but the word says that we need to cast down imaginations. Yes, sir. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's what he said. And as we begin to take these things in, if it exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you said, well, I don't know that much about him. Well, he's, that's an invitation for you to learn more about him. To become deeply and intimately acquainted with him. And that's what Paul said. He said, it's my determined purpose to know you. Yeah. To become more deeply and intimately acquainted with you, realizing and recognizing the power that flows out of your resurrection. Yeah. To know you in the fellowship of your suffering. Yes. He says, I want to know you. He said, that's by, you know, when I have a determined purpose to do something. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm investing something. He invested something in us. Yes. And now we're investing something in knowing him. Yes. So we shouldn't say that, I, I don't know that much about him. But he says that, that anything that exalts itself to, against the knowledge of God, yes. bring it into captivity. Every thought to be obedience of Christ. There's something about that. Bringing those thoughts into the obedience of Christ. It needs to line up with the word of God. That's right. Don't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what well it does. <laughs> the whole speaking the word of God. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We need to bring those things into captivity. Yeah. So, hey, God isn't saying uh, don't think about it. You know, he said, bring it. I mean, you got to think about it before bringing it to, to, to captivity. Yeah, man. It's accepting it. Because sometimes we accept it. And you know what? We, we will sit down, somebody try to tell you something that uh -huh. you don't believe. Uh, no. <laughs> uh -huh. mm. And we quit. Uh, no. Nope. We quit to reject that. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and so when it comes to the word of God, we're not sure. Okay. Uh, well, let me, and then some people got it. Use the Google. I go and use Google. Google gets you there. Yeah. But once you get there, you're gonna have to do something with the information that you get. You know, it gets you there. And so we don't just gonna stay in Google. Okay. <laughs> or Siri, Siri. Okay. Uh, what does the Bible say about bringing thoughts in the captivity? And she'll tell you. Yeah, she'll tell you. She'll give you all the Bible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that a nice pleasure for us? <laughs> and if you don't like her voice, you can change it to a That's right. Yeah. His voice. Yeah. You know, uh, hey. And some people, I like those British voices, and somebody will give them, you know, what kind of voice you want. Yeah. But the, the point is that we need to know Christ for ourselves. That's yeah. right. Not based on, on what, what Mama said or what Daddy said. Right. Uh, not based on, you know, what the pastor said. We need to know for ourselves. I mean, because guess what? When we're faced with that, you know, when they stand you up in line, and I'm not trying to paint a bad picture here, but when they stand you in line, they're going to ask each individual, what do you believe? That's right. Okay? What do you believe? That's like that in the military, right? You know, yeah. they get an inspection? Yeah, yeah. We'll get the next one. Yeah. You know? And each one of us is going to have to give an account. That's right. For what we believe. That's right. What are you on the side? I mean, we need to know that up front. And I'm not trying to put, I'm saying, I'm trying to lead you to a place where we make these decisions now, where we know where we're going now. Not when we're pressured, because guess what? We were watching a family feud yesterday, and uh, they were going for the big bucks. Okay. $20,000. Guy needed 13 points. <laughs> the first part of the guy, all the points, they, they get 200 points. Yes, he needed 13 points. Uh, Asked five questions. And he couldn't get 13 points. <laughs> and I mean, and, and you know, usually a family girl over there. You know, family. You know, look at him like this. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. something. You gotta know something. No, I mean, we need to we need to know. Yes, and, and you know what? God saved us so that we can have an orderly lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We are not just order. He says he brings order out of chaos. Yeah. He 
wants us to have an orderly lifestyle. He wants us to have harmony. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to, 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 to get along. You know, that's what Jesus was going out promoting, you know. Let's have some fellowship. And so, uh, uh, to bring us to a place where we can put our trust in him. Yeah. God wants to bring us to a place where we can put our trust in him. I mean, can we say that to them? Lord, I trust you. Lord, so, I trust you. My, my eyes are telling me one thing, Lord. That the things that are going on around me is telling me one thing, Lord. But God, I trust you. And we can look in the word and we can see people who have demonstrated that trust. You know, those three Hebrew boys that we talk about all the time, they demonstrated that trust. And they said this, even if he doesn't, they still was not going to do the wrong thing. When we're faced with that type of situation, we have to operate on what we know, what we believe, and, and what was took in, put inside of us. Yeah. Oh, yes, we need to grab hold of that. And, you know, Peter... Bless his soul. They, they said, you wanted his. Yeah. Peter, you want, uh, he warm his hand at the fire. Yeah, it was. He, he's lurking in the background after Jesus, they get what they get to Jesus. And, and uh, oh, that's one of his. Oh, no. I'm not one of his. Oh, you talk like him. Yeah, yeah. You know, something about that. Uh -huh. Oh, you talk it's like him. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not one of his. And then they convinced him. They said, hey, curse. So I'm, I'm going to say something that I need you to say. But then he walked away sorrowful because he knew that that wasn't the right response. That's right. You know, and, and, and so what happens when we are faced with how to make the right response? So when you ask yourself the question, how will I survive? Yes. You just survive by his grace and his mercy. Yes. Yes. Grace is sufficient. sufficient. You. Yeah. He said that I have mercy as my top of mercy. Yeah. You know, it's something about his grace and it's something about his mercy that, that overshadows and covers everything. It says the multitude of sin. Yeah. And, and you know what? That's not going to separate us from his love. It's not going to separate us from, from his care and his concern. Yeah. You know, that, that he wants us to be part of his family. And he says that he's putting us where he wants us. Yeah. And so... We need to cry out, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me to be a part of, of you every day. And for you to be a part of me every day. And as we begin to communicate this with him, yeah. he says that he will watch over. He said, look, son, look, daughter. He said, there's nothing that can take you out of my hand. Nothing. When we, group, when we understand that, it doesn't matter what we're going through. Yeah. And I'm not trying to make light of the things that we go through, but I'm saying that he's with you even with what you're going through. Oh, Lord, help us, God, to, to be able to understand God. And take away the pain, too, Father. That's the thing that we most don't like. We don't like the pain. We don't like the discomfort. Oh, but I'm going to tell you that even in the pain and discomfort, it draws you closer to him. Oh, because it makes you trust him that yeah. much more. Father, I thank you. thank you. Lord, your word is rich, strong, yes. powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. And when the question is that, I ask, Lord, how then shall we survive? I pray, God, that you show us this. It's that by trusting you, you'll get us there. By putting our trust in you because of your grace and your mercy, Lord, yes. that you show, Lord, not just us, but on the whole world. Oh, Father, this invitation, God, for those who don't know you. Do you know Jesus? I mean, can we really say, I know Jesus? And, and some people think they know him. But Jesus said, I, I know you're not. But, but Lord, I, I did all of those things. And, and, and sometimes we have to understand that, that just by doing things, it's not saying I know him. But this is the invitation. You know what I It says that we have the ABCs. We got to come to a bit. I bet that we fail, that we sin. B is believe. I said, believe in your heart. Confess with your heart. C is commit. I'm going to commit my way to you. So this is the invitation to come to Christ. An invitation to decide. Amen.
climb up to the highest mountain Look all around, could I go by? Looking for Jesus Went down into the deepest valley All around, down there, couldn't I go by? Well, across the deep blue sea Couldn't find one to compare Since your grace, your love, your mercy Nobody greater, nobody greater than you I searched all Couldn't find nobody And with the high and low you couldn't find nobody. Hey. Look at the Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Hey, hey. Nobody can heal the life you can. Oh, most holy. You are the greatest.
Did you help him with uh, our ties that often come from Second Corinthians? Chapter 9, verse 6 through 8, and it reads, Remember this, who have sold sparingly, but also reap sparingly. Who have sold generously, but also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God has a hate to bless you abundantly, suffering in all things, at all times, and in all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Give, and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run over, and will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. What an awesome God we serve. Regardless of what you're going through, whatever, God is going to die. It's your season to be blessed. God made you a promise. Guess what? You stood your head. He's going to open the window and hold you out of my mind.
how then shall we survive? We have to get to that point where we get immovable, trusting in him. Yes. Knowing that, that, that when it's, he says, stand after you've done yes. all that you can do. Yes. He says, stand yes. and, and, and see the Jesus. salvation of the Lord. Jesus. I mean, you, don't just look, <laughs> you know, there's, there's something, why the reason why we got to stand. Mm -hmm. We're going to see his salvation. Amen. And let him change that situation. You know, whatever the situation is that you're dealing with, let him change the situation. Ooh, Jesus. Amen. 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 So, as we close, Ooh, remember, join us for, for prayer. And you don't last long. I mean, just a, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then we can talk a bit more. But, you know, just the prayer. The church life prayer. Uh, amen. 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 Romans 11. Verse 36, read out of everything. It says, For well, from him all things originate, and through him all things live and exist, and to him are all things directed. To him be glory, honor, forever. Amen. Amen.